We went to a different park earlier today, but I didn't really check the satellite imagery the best on it. So I didn't realize until we got there that it's actually a saltwater. It was connected to saltwater. So we do plan on making another saltwater ecosphere, but we wanted to do a little more research ahead of time. So we had to leave that park and we knew this park has some good stuff. So we decided to come back here. And that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna gather some more stuff for an ecosphere. This time we're gonna change the ratios a little bit, but we'll go into that a little bit more later. Yeah, we're gonna gather some stuff and make another ecosphere. One of the neat things I'm seeing right now is that on top of some of these leaves, I see, I'm pretty sure is a bunch of snail poop. Um, I never expected to have a hard time finding snails here because we found snails easily last time, but pretty sure we're at least gonna find some snails. We're hoping really to find some more isopods. That's probably one of the favorite things that we have. Next behind that is the amphipods. We find those two really intriguing, just fun to watch. So we're hoping to find some of those, haven't collected any time since winter, so we're really not sure what we're gonna find today, but we'll see. A lot of these creatures are going to be living in just the breaking down leaves and twigs and stuff like that. So if you just skim the water, you, you can get some like Daphnia and stuff like that, but a lot of them may be hiding out underneath like layers of leaves. So what I try to do is I try to scoop up underneath and get kind of skim like the top inch or so, maybe a little bit less of the stuff that's right on the base or right on the, like the bottom and actually put that in because that's going to really help get a nice variety of what's going on. Not just what's suspended in the water, but what also is underneath and kind of mucking around in the leaves. I don't know if I want all these pine needles. So I am gonna pick some of those out. Yeah, I already see some snails. <laughs> that's, a, that's a huge thing of snail eggs. I, there's two snails. Three, okay, there's three snails on this leaf and a bunch of snail eggs. Four, four snails, but we're not gonna take this leaf. Oh my gosh. The snails must be reproducing like crazy because, oh my gosh. Here, you have to see how many different eggs. There's a pack, there's some, there's some, there's some, and there was some more down there too. Like there is snail eggs everywhere. Huh? That's an isopod. That's a good size one too. That's probably one of the larger ice spots I've seen yet. After starting to collect some of this stuff, we realized that there is just a ton of snail eggs everywhere. So I, I don't think I can quite just grab the leaves like I was planning to, short of having just a snail. Like, I, I, there would be way too many snails in that thing. Um, we saw like one patch of snails, go one egg patch of snails, and it just exploded into ecosphere. And like this, I saw a leaf with like six patches on it. So, but I'm grabbing the leaves, and what's kind of nice is the isopods and amphipods that I'm really looking for, they they don't do well out of water. But there's just enough water on the leaves that they kind of get stuck in place. So I'm able to gently kind of scoop them, not really scoop, but just touch them with my finger. And because there's some water on my finger, they actually get stuck to my finger. And then the bucket has water that I'm collecting them in. So as soon as I touch that finger into the water, they just swim off. So it's making it really easy to collect them. And there is way more isopods now than we've ever seen in this park. So I think waiting until after winter, because before we collected, it was a lot more cool. There's, there's tons of them. So I'm really excited about that. So I'm gonna keep gathering some more of those, this time being a little bit more selective because this is just snail apocalypse waiting to happen. This one I gotta put some more water in, but that's fine. Because while I'm adding the water, we'll probably start finding some of the like Daphnia and things like that. Ooh, there's a worm thing. Don't know what it is, but it's going in. Oh yeah, there's an isopod. This one's Charlie. Amphipod. I don't think we've named any amphipods yet, have we? I just named all the isopods Charlie because then no matter which one I'm looking at, if I call it Charlie, I'm right. So those two isopods were definitely mating. Because <laughs> they, they Oh, I didn't interrupt. They're, they're still together. We've come to this lake before, and one of the problems we've seen is that every now and then when we start digging along the shoreline, there is a bit of oil slick on top of the water. Now, I'm not sure, because I haven't seen any motorized boats. So initially, we thought it was because of boats on the water. But I don't, I haven't seen any. But there does still seem to be like, I think it's acorns or some other similar thing like that. And when we put them in the ecosphere, we started seeing oil actually come out of those, um, let's see, the, pretty much these things right here. So I think it's actually naturally released oil, but nonetheless, we don't really want to see that in our ecosphere. So I've been avoiding whenever I see that. These snails, apparently, this is like their honeymoon or something. 
post honeymoon? I don't know. But I've been pretty happy. Oh, that isopod actually was pregnant. Or, yeah, she had a brood pouch. Definitely, I could clearly see it too. She wasn't the biggest though. That's one of the interesting things about isopods is that they can like reproduce at such a small size compared to their full size. So this, another ice spot, I just picked it up off the leaf and it's kind of stuck to my finger because they don't do the best out of water. But once I put it into the water, good clear? Yep. Actually, that's two, it looks like. And they swim off. Oh, they were, that was two. Yeah. As you can see from this, when you gather even from the same park, there's a lot of different things that can happen. They'll change what you find, be it the season or even where you're looking at in, whether it's on the surface or in the leaf litter and things like that. So we really wanted to take the chance to show you some of our thought process behind why we're gathering and what areas we're focusing on when we're gathering our ecospheres. So now that you've seen us gather the ecosphere, we are going to be making some more videos showing you what we're going to do and actually assembling the ecosphere from the stuff we gathered in this video. Be sure to tune in on this upcoming Monday for the second installment of Macro Monday, where you get a closer look at just various critters we have inside of our containers or even stuff we found around outside the house.